Hello everyone, um, my name is Dixon again. I'm coming this time to explain to you the internal control over cash. And I will cover some topics like the cash registers, the petty cash, and bank reconciliation statements. So please pay attention. I know there are some backgrounds going on outside because some people are having some good time right so internal control over cash what is internal control the process and procedures a company uses to safeguard the assets processes information accurately and ensure compliance with the rules and regulations the steps in cash control one i said separation of functions so with this i said accountants should not be put or have access to cash same as employees handling cash or handling cash records they should not have the same responsibility given to those people uh, with the accounting records so there should be few people involved in the safeguard of cash documentation receipts tip summaries sales audit reports copies of checks and gift certificates should be maintained for reference independent verification this I said do not trust anyone when it comes to money and here I said the full name of money is called money count count the money don't trust anyone and must be recounted by managers or supervisors or sometimes it could be done by key holders deposit all cash receipts every cash that you receive for the day make sure the following morning first thing prepare a deposit and if possible get the guy or the, the lady that deposits every funds that you received yesterday get them out of the place or at the scheduled time of pickups to be deposited to the bank payments must be made by check but this this exempts small payments because i said small payments is only meant for petty cash and uh, when we cover the petty cash, you will know the small payments that are, we are talking about here. Verification of receipt and payment of cash. <clears throat> Make sure all receipt is verified before making a payment. Don't just make a receipt or don't just receive a receipt and just make a payment. Verify first. Sometimes you have people in the companies that come and park their cars outside, and they, they will be using those slips to receive money so that they, re, they refund themselves. Because those company cars that they use for parking meters, you have to give them back their money. So make sure you verify what they give you. Make sure when, when, so, when you send an employee to buy something, and when that employee brings your receipt, make sure you verify what the employee brings and the receipts. Verification is well, well considered. Reconcil reconciliation of bank and checkbook is required with accounting record at the end of this month. This is very important and this is going to be the last topic that we discuss here. Let's continue. So, I will show you the journal entries for cash registers. Because some people, when you use the register all day in the night, you have a balance of this, you have some shortage, you have an overage, or sometimes you have an even register. So how you do those journal entries? This is one of the control that we use here. First, first is an even register. How we journalize an even register? We say cash register for the day to roll $10,000. Cash receipt for the for from sales is ten thousand. 
so this is what I'm talking about here from these journal entries so cash receipts and if you go to one of my first slides we said whatever you receive or whenever you receive something whenever you receive an asset or anything that you receive you debit so anything that you gives you credits that's something that i have in one of my first videos so cash receipts where is a cash receipt this is what the register received for the day is ten thousand so we debit this ten thousand this is the money that we receive for the day ten thousand and cash register for the day to all this this is what the register actually capture is ten thousand so this is even so we call this sales revenue and we call this cash so these are even register how do we do the short uh, register with the shortage cash register received for the day I mean cash receipt for the day is this is $9,980 $9,980 we say whenever you receive you debit so we receive this and we say cash register for the day total 10,000 but this is what the register actually captures so what the register actually captures is your sales revenue so the difference between the cash receipts and the sales revenue is twenty dollars so this twenty dollars is actually your shortage that means the register is short twenty dollars for the day so this twenty dollars is a debit okay this is the opposite the opposite occur here this is a cash register for the day to roll 9980 cash register i mean cash receipts from the day sales is 10000 so this is what the register receive this is what the, this is this is what you receive what the money that you receive from customer and put in the in the register is this 10000 okay but the receipt for the day total this this is what the register actually captures from the receipts is this so when you go to difference between ten thousand and nine thousand hundred and eighty dollars is a twenty dollars difference so this twenty dollars difference is an overage the register is over for twenty dollars so you credit this okay but look at what i said here and look at what i said here these do normally have a, a, a specific place they are always like that but mind you know that whenever is a shortage it's in the debit whenever is a overage or the register is over it's in the credits now the petty cash the petty cash is a small amount of money sometimes it varies according to the size of the company could be 500 could be 300 could be 200 and this is the money that the company uses for little expenses so these little expenses are sometimes needed especially like parking tickets especially like buying some little little stuff like your store has a grand opening they need to buy balloons so they buy those balloons using this petty cash um if they need if the if your porter need to buy some brooms if your porter needs to buy some little stuff for your bath for cleaning um your place around sometimes if you don't get supplies from your warehouse you could use the petty cash to do those kind of little expenses okay sometimes you do you use this petty cash for like transportation you want to get something from another store you can use this petty cash to pay those transportation for people but this is what you should actually remember here that a petty cash fund is made payable to petty cash okay money is kept this money is kept in a safe in a safe alongside a voucher for details okay. this voucher is where you enter every details with any money that you, that is dispensed from this petty cash establish a small payments i'm talking about the small payments 
eliminate writing many checks. So instead of writing checks for everything that you want to do, you can use this petty cash to do that. Conveniency of small <clears throat> cash and cash on hand for little expenses. It is an internal control measure to restrict cash funds. Replenish at the end of the week or month. All the small expenses are ch charged to miscellaneous expenses account. Okay. So these are these are some transactions that involve the petty cash and how we treat these transactions. Okay. So this is what we have here. We said establish a 500 petty cash funds. This is December 31st. December 31st again, petty cash receipts shows the following expenditure. Office, supplies, postage stamps, store supplies, Alfred withdrawings, advertising expenses. And this petty cash is increased to $300. And this petty cash was decreased to $100. Why I put this, I just want you to understand when there is an increase, how to trade the, the petty cash, how to do the journal entries, and when there is a decrease, how to do the journal entries. That's why I mentioned this both. But pay attention to what is going to be here in the journal entries. Okay? So here is our journal entries. You have a debit and a credit. So December 31st, petty cash. Whenever petty cash is established, you have petty cash 500 and cash 500. Okay, petty cash is receiving and cash is given. Okay, and these are your expenses which are listed like this. And when you total them, it's 350, which was cash. Okay, all these expenses were cash. Cash was going out for these expenses. Cash was going out for these expenses. So on December 31st, increase petty cash fund to 300. So if you increase in petty cash, so you debit petty cash 300 and credit cash 300. If you decrease in cash to $100, so what do you do here? You decrease cash. I mean, cash is, 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 is getting because you're taking, you're taking out cash from the petty cash. So this is going to be debited and change fund is going to be credited. Okay? Do not forget this whenever it, it, it comes to decrease. Okay. Petty cash for the month. So I just want you to see how I treated this for the month. This is how it's gonna appear in your in your in your books. If you keep like a a a, a, a ledger a, a, like a, a worksheet, this is how it's gonna look like in your worksheets. So just the same thing. These are the date description, the voucher number. The voucher number is the receipt numbers. Total amounts appear here. These we are the expenses that we are undergo undergone through the month, and these are the amounts for others okay so this is the established look at here this never appear in any of these so i just added 500 here supplies you go to the supply column you go to the postage column the store supplies column drawings column and advertising column and enter all these as it is while the total appear with everything so at the end of the day the cash that was disposed was three hundred and fifty dollars so what happened here what's your total balance now if you take three hundred and fifty dollars from five hundred what do you have you have a hundred and fifty dollars if well how many how much cash should be replenished to your petty cash is three hundred and fifty dollars because only three hundred and fifty dollars was used this is a decrease in the fund if you decrease the fund so how much you're gonna get is four hundred dollars so pay attention to this. This is very important worksheet. So now is the bank reconciliation statement. So I want you to remember some of the facts 
and bank reconciliation statements. To reconcile here means to resolve differences between the activities that appear in the company cash book and in the company <coughs> bank statements at the end of the month. So the entire process here is to bring those two accounts, the, both the bank book and the bank statement to agreements. So bank statements monthly um, is a monthly report showing all transactions during that period. Okay. So these are the terminologies that you need to remember because they are very important. So what's a cancel check? A check paid by a bank out of the company's account. Outstanding checks. Outstanding checks written by the company and entered in the cash in the cash and or, or checkbook but has not appear in the monthly bank statement. This could be like mainly employees checks and it could be a check like um, a petty cash check. Okay? Deposit in transit. Company deposited uh, company deposit made that appear in the checkbook but not in the bank statement because of lapses of time. Deposit make in the evening in the weekend, in the ATM, and deposits that are mailed. Because of the time difference, so this money will never appear in the bank, but it appear in the checkbook. So we need to reconcile that at the end of the month if it doesn't, if it doesn't appear. Service charge. You know, bank, bank charge uh, on customers for maintenance of, of, their, of whatever they do, not sufficient funds NSF when this is when a company write a check to pay someone else but there is not enough funds in the account and the check is rejected it is called a bad check or uncollectible check do not forget those terms sometimes they trick you by changing the word instead of NFS check or they just use the word bad check or uncollect uncollectible checks but those are all NFS, not sufficient funds. A bank reconciliation continues. Note collected and interest. Sometimes the bank does these kind of services to their customers by collecting notes from, um, from, from the company's customers. But they don't, they don't do it for nothing. They collect fees also. So that fees and that collection also has to be reconcile at the end of the month okay errors no everybody's liable to errors even even the machine makes errors so the company makes errors especially like sometime when a company when a company has the same name with another company sometimes there must be mistakes in that kind of situations so these are treated here okay Okay, these are the kind of example. Sometimes when you write a check, you overstate the amount or you understate the amount. And in, the, in your checkbook, you write a different amount. So this, I will show you all these errors, how you treat them. However, no journal entries are needed for these adjustments. If you, for like these two mistakes, if you do these mistakes here, these mistakes here, bank mistakes, and um, and and this mistake done by the checkbook, writing a check with these amounts, and you enter it in your in your checkbook with these amounts. Whenever you whenever you you doing your journal entries, you do not do this uh, uh, as as um journal entries. Okay, cash withdrawal. This is entered in the checkbook as a deduction from the funds withdrawn from the bank okay so i bring, brought some instances just to show you an example of how i covered all this so i said on may 31st the following activity took place between alfred company and its bank accounts 
His bank balance was 4,500. His checkbook balance was 6,420. Okay, outstanding checks. So I have these outstanding checks, the total 700. Deposit in transit, 2,500. Collection, bank collection and interest, 1,250. Collect, collection fees, $31. NFS not sufficient funds checks 800 bank <coughs> bank charge Alfreda company $100 to the account of Alfred company okay Alfred withdrew 400 from the ATM service charge by the bank $30 a check a, Alfred wrote a check of 132 but recorded 130 123 in his checkbook Okay, understated errors in the book is hundred dollars. So here is how you maintain these books. This is the bank reconciliation. So when you're doing bank reconciliation, know that you're trying to amend two things. You're trying to amend to reconcile what's in the bank statement and what you have in the company's bank statements. I mean in the company checkbook. So here is the, the details here. This is how you do this entries okay there is no debit or credit here so this is the bank balance as per bank statements I mean balance as per bank statements is 4,500 okay deposit in transit this is your deposit in transit we said it's 2,500 this is deposit in transit 2,500 bank made an error of hundred dollars oops bank made an error of a hundred dollars so there was a hundred dollars of a bank error somewhere okay that was here alfredo okay the bank charge alfredo company hundred dollars to <clears throat> alfred company so that hundred dollars is brought as an error here so you add these two and we get 2600 so it gives you 7100 when you add this and this okay now you go to the deductions these are employees checks these are employees checks or if there are no employees checks they could be very cash checks so you add them all the total they already added them over here we they said it was 700 so it was 700 dollars so these are deductions you deduct this 700 from 7100 you get 46400 so this is the balance as per adjusted bank statement balance is 6400 then you come to the balance as per checkbook this is the company's checkbook note collected and interest this is the note collected and interest okay first balance as per cash book was 4620 which is this 4620 you brought it here note collected and interest was 1200 understated amounts was a hundred dollars this is the understated stated amounts this is the opposite of this this is a overstated this is a understated okay then you add them it gives you seven thousand six hundred and Seventy dollars. Now you come to a deduction. NFS, not sufficient funds. Collection fees, withdrawals, errors in the checkbook. This is the overstatements. Service charge. So they all total to one thousand two hundred and seventy. So you deduct this one thousand two hundred and seventy plus from this seven thousand six hundred and seventy. You have this. So that means you have reconciled the bank balance and the checkbook 